Hey everyone, just want to stop by real quick for this podcast starts and say you should like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on all my social medias at John D. Clouser. Let us say name as the name that you subscribe to on this YouTube channel. So enjoy this clip and I'll see you guys on the other side. What's going on, everyone? How are you? We are here on a new episode of the Juan Solo Show with your host, me, Juan D. Clouser, John D. Clouser, whichever one you want, like whichever one you like to uh, call, whichever one doesn't really matter. Does it matter? Does it matter? So apparently, I found out my at my job that my boss. I don't know. This is all legit, of course. He might be a little bit uh, on the more racist side, which is funny because then I asked like the person who I taught told was that like was told this information from. Because uh, he's a white person, and I was like, "So does does the does the manager not know that I'm a spick?" And he's like, "No, I don't think so." And I'm like, oh, "I'm like interesting." And it's funny because like it's probably interesting. Like looking at me, you wouldn't think that I'm of eth- ethnicity, but I am. Probably been a while since I brought this up. I feel like I'm like that one. Uh, I feel like I'm like logic, who's always bringing up the fact he's black. It's like, yeah, we get it. You're black. Anyway. We're just talking about this, like, well, I love, like, using spick and wetback, using these terms. And these are terms, derogatory terms for Hispanic people, Latino people. Uh, I am of that. I was where I was born. So I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. I've always thought it was, like, wetback. It's such an interesting term. I get it. But, like, the only ones that, like, ever swim here are, like, Cubans and Dominicans. And, like, none of y'all call them wetbacks because they're so dark. So, most of the time, you think they're just black. So, they're just Afro-Latinos. I guess Cubans, some of you think. But, like, do you guys ever... You never call a Cuban a wetback. I've never heard anyone call a Cuban a wetback. I've heard you mostly call, like, Mexicanos. uh, Anyone from, like, Central America is usually that kind of term. Uh, Spick is another one like hispanic i think that's supposed to be thing uh if you don't know the difference between there's latino and there's hispanic uh or yeah um if you're of spanish descent like from spain uh it means you're like european spanish so like that means you're like hispanic and then there's like latin americans uh like central american which is mostly like more indigenous people (coughs) indigenous people people who have Indian because basically what happened is like to make like central like Honduran uh, El Salvadorian Guatemalan any of these people like you had to fuck them into the existence so it was the Spaniards that came in and then they uh, had sex with the Indians and then boom came the Latino people uh, because then they these people were forced not to speak like well they wouldn't allow any of the Indians to speak the native tongue, any like the Aztecs or the Mayan Indians. Uh, so, or the Incas. There's also the Incas. Can't forget about the Incas. They're, they're like, I feel like, <clears throat> I always feel like they're like the most forgotten ones, but they, they've done like the coolest shit because they're the ones that did all the shit up in the mountains. It's like, we, we like as Mayan Indians, because that's where my ancestry comes from, is that we just made pyramids, which is so funny, is that, who was this, like, Andrew Schultz, I think, is the one he says. He's like, everyone knows that. Everyone knows that uh, Egyptians made pyramids, or they have pyramids, but everyone always doubts if they actually made them. But no one doubts like the Mayan Indians or the Aztecs about like theirs. And it's, it is kind of funny. It is kind of true uh, about that. Uh, but yeah, what's up? How are you? So yeah, that's, that's the big thing or that's not the big thing, but that's, it was weird. And it's always, that was like, the, that wasn't even what I was going to even start this podcast with. Cause what's been really bugging me lately is that, so I, uh, I, where, where my gym is right across the street is Starbucks. And so the other day, and this happens every once in a while, I don't go to Starbucks very often, but when I do go to Starbucks, I get a, I have a very simple, easy, 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 easy order. I just like 
basically, if we keep on the same subject of what we've been talking about, like 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 Latinos and stuff like that, I like uh, Mexican coffee, which I didn't realize it was Mexican coffee until I went to Overland Park, Kansas. Which then it turned out, thinking about it, it was a bunch of it was a white person who said it's like you mean a Mexican coffee because what a Mexican coffee is is just it is just coffee, regular coffee, preferably, from my opinion, the, the strongest one you have in house, and then. Half that, half hot chocolate. That's all it is. That's what a Mexican coffee is. I don't know. I just always drink it like that because my mindset is I don't want to put, if I can avoid sugar and creamer, then like, why not like, you know, stay away from that. So what I was thinking is the best way of doing that. And like, you know, I like coffee and sometimes even if you want to go crazy, you go three fourths coffee, one third hot chocolate because you just need a little bit of a mixture. Because hot chocolate basically is creamer and sugar put together with a chocolate flavoring. Boom. And, you know, you add a little bit of flavorness to your coffee. You know, interesting, right? Huh. You know. So I go to Starbucks. Starbucks has some of those insane orders. People have all these crazy things. You add, you can add whipped cream. You can add foam. You can have stuff for your dog. You can put cinnamon on stuff. You have all this stuff. All of it. And you guys understand. People at Starbucks understand all of that. Like, oh, Frappuccino Mocha. Uh, put put, put more dash of hot sauce and put some cinnamon stuff. And then that, that honey. So uh, Put some honey on it. Put some caramel. Put, uh, put some foam. You understand all that. And you're so happy. You're so happy to do it. <clears throat> and then I get up there. And I'm like, hey, can I just get half coffee, half hot chocolate? And they look at me like, you mean a mocha? I'm like. No, I want a half. I don't know what a mocha is. I still do not know what a mocha is. I don't care to know what a mocha is. So I don't tell me because I don't care. I do not care. What I want is a half, half coffee, half hot chocolate, which I don't think is that hard. And they're always like, "Well, how do you want me to put this into the into the computer?" I'm like, "I do. I don't know. I don't know how you. I don't. I don't work there." I'm like, "That seems like a, a, a YP thing, man." He's like. And like the person's always like a white pee. I'm like, a you problem? That's a you thing. That's not me. I don't know. I don't work at Starbucks. I'm just wanting a half hot chocolate, half coffee. That's it. That's all I want. And they're like, well, uh, I'm like, and like, you know what? I'm like, don't, don't, I'm like, just don't worry about it. And I, and like, no, like, we can do this for you. I'm like, okay, do you guys have coffee? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, do you guys have hot chocolate? And they're like, yes. I'm like, can you just take a cup, put half of it and half of it? And I'm like, I don't care how you put it up in the, into the, computer i don't care i will pay a hundred dollars right now just to get away from this conversation because this is so stupid because i'm telling you what i want that's it i i I don't even like i'm not even pretentious i'm not like i want a mexican hot coffee which is that's technically what that's what it's called mexican like hot coffee or some bullshit like that and i I don't go like i'm not all pretentious i'm just like hey half coffee half hot chocolate that's all i want and you guys at starbucks freak the fuck out and you guys like "I, i i i don't know what that means it's like, how do you not know what this means? This is like the most two elementary things. Like every coffee shop has always had coffee and they've always had hot chocolate. Sometimes they have vanilla hot chocolate, which is fucking gross, but you'll take it. I will take it. The point of it is you just want to get fucking high. I'm just trying to get high off caffeine right now. And you're really fucking that up. You're really fucking it up. I don't, it just doesn't make any sense how you have all this other shit. <laughs> and you fuck up on Coffee and hot chocolate. They're like, you're like, what? Like, huh? Like, how do you want to put in the computer? Mo- huh? I'm like, mocha? No, I don't care. No, it's not a mocha. That's not what I said. I, I, I don't, I didn't say mocha one time. One time. And then, like, I think mocha, and then, like, actually, what is mocha? Mocha is, like, just cream and, like, uh, espresso with, like, coffee, with, like, like, uh, um, with, like, like, mocha. It's like a mocha like uh syrup or something like that i'm like it's the, but this is not what i want I'm like it's like this is so fucking stupid because it's so easy like do you guys have hot chocolate do you guys have coffee boom you know what maybe that's what i should start doing i'm gonna start doing when i go to starbucks i'm like do you guys have coffee and they're gonna be like yeah and i'm like okay great do you guys have hot chocolate and, I'm, and they're gonna be like yeah we do i'm like okay great can you guys just put half and half of that in a cup the largest cup just do that for me Maybe if I just do that, maybe if I just don't say I want to have coffee, have hot chocolate, maybe it's how I'm delivering it to them. Maybe, maybe, but it's incredibly frustrating because I don't want, I don't, I don't want much. I don't want much in life. I, I'm a very simplest. Per- I'm simple. I eat rice and chicken. 
like every day and I put some salt on it. I'm like, fuck it. It's cool. Good enough. Good enough. I can just drink coffee. Fuck, you know what? I can take hot coffee. You know what my version of like cold coffee is? Taking a big jug of hot coffee and putting ice in it and then chugging the shit out of it because it's cold. It immediately turns cold because the ice fucking melts. And so you're getting a lot of water. You're fucking doing it. It's probably super counterproductive, but it works for me. Try it. I used to, before I worked out, I used to take two 16 ounces of like, of those like foam cups and I'd take hot coffee, fill it up and then put just enough coffee ice in it just so it melt and I'd wait for it to melt and then I'll just chug both of them boom and that was my pre-workout for the longest of time fucking works great you shit like a racehorse though it is insane insane but that's what you do that's what you do hey hey that's what you gotta do yeah but uh, Starbucks come on man like it's not that difficult. It really is not that difficult. And that's probably going to be the title. It's going to be half coffee, half hot chocolate. It's, like, it's not fucking hard. It's not hard. It infuriates me. Because it's just like their level of like, what the fuck did you just say? And like, how do you want me to put this in the computer? I don't, what do you mean? How do you, how do you want me to put it in the computer? I'm like, don't put it in the computer and just give it to me. How about that? Just don't put it in the computer. You can just give it to me for free. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know your computer system. And I remember I remember getting so frustrated with it once. And I'm like, you know what? Just don't don't worry about it. I'm like, I don't want anything now. And they're like, no, we can put it. We just don't know how you want to put it in the computer. I'm like, I can't. I do not know what that fucking means. I do not know what that means. Put it in the computer. You put it in the computer. You have the, you have the hat on. You have the Starbucks stuff on. If we were this, if this was a movie, they would be like, "That is the that character is the person who works at Starbucks," and they would look at me and be like, "This is the asshole who's getting fucking pissed off at the people at Starbucks." That's what it would be like. That's what it'd be. That's all. Oh. I've been holding this in for weeks, guys, because this is fucking infuriating, incredibly infuriating. This is the reason why I don't like a lot. I don't like talking to a lot of people all the time. I can't stand. A lot of people because of that shit like that, 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 things like that. I'm like, I'd rather just be alone talking to a microphone, looking to a camera (laughs) by myself, being like a fucking insane person, fucking insane person, right? Yeah, we have that. So that's, that was this, that was that, that was, was that like the big thing that happened this week? Is you think like, hey John, why don't you look at your notes, you dick? <clears throat> what else do we have? Uh oh. This is another thing that angered the shit out of me. So baseball. Baseball is one of the most boringest things in the world. It really is. It's insanely boring. Very few times have I ever I've been to many baseball games. I've done a lot of tailgating at these games. Actually to tell you the truth, every baseball game I've ever been to, I've tailgated at. Why? Because you have to. I worked for the Royals. I was one of the official photographers for two seasons. Great job. Great job. Recommend it if you're a photographer. But, but, watching this shit. I, I had free tickets to all of these games all the time. I get tickets half price all the time. All the time. Because I worked for them. I worked for the Royals. And I was like, fuck this. <laughs> fuck, fuck baseball. Super boring, but if you just made the game better, you won't have to do those field of dream shit. Because I think that stuff's dumb as hell. Like, why are you doing stuff off of a game, off of a movie? It's like you're you're Major League Baseball. You don't need to do this. Like, you don't have to do this. Like, that's a movie. Like, that's, with Kevin Costner in it. Like, you can do your own thing. You have like the All Star Game. You could do more things like that, or just maybe not have the season be 182 games. There's a there is a big argument that you could make on that how lowering the seasons would make it a little bit better. Like, I don't know, maybe a hundred games. Like, it doesn't even make any sense how you even like come up with that number. Actually, let's Google this. It's a weird Google thing. I haven't. Oh man, I I've, I've googled a lot of weird shit this week. Uh, how many 
games are in a baseball season, right? That's the first question we should ask, right? 162. Okay. How did baseball get to 162 game season? Uh, expansion brought uh, about the 10 teams, 162 game schedule, 18 games between 18 games between opponents with a major league American League uh, expanding in uh, 61 and major league following in 62. Uh, the year 61 marks the only year when two major loop played schedules uh, of equal length of unequal length and also only season that had a different number of teams. Huh. Interesting. Why is, yeah. So baseball decided to add eight additional games to the season. So one team can play all nine of their opponents 18 times, nine opponents times 18 games, 162 games. Okay, that's why. Interesting. So they can play their uh, Huh. <clears throat> so extension. Extension. So because they added new teams into the league. And then from that. Led to. Now they want to play all like nine opponents play against. Have 18 games against. Their, their teams in their, in their own division. Equals 162 games. Okay, that actually kind of makes sense. Huh. Interesting. I would have never Googled that because I, I think baseball is incredibly boring, but if it wasn't for the fact that I talked about baseball, then I, I wouldn't have. Huh, that's actually kind of interesting why why they do it like that. Because there's, there's a reason to all that stuff. Like, you don't realize it. You don't realize how there's a reason why they play, you know, like in basketball, why the Lakers would play the Wolverines or the, yeah, the like the Timberwolves, like two games in a row take a break, play them again three times in a row, and then like not play them for like two months. Like there's probably a reason behind that or if there's this, you know, system, you know, because like they have to play against each other a certain amount of times, which I don't even know if they even are in the same, I think they're in the same uh, conference, I think. Not for sure. Like if it's not football, I don't know any of that. I don't care about the other ones. Like those are cool to watch, but I just don't really care as much. Like football, I could, you know, like the AFC, AFC West, you know, Kansas City, Chargers, uh, Raiders, and then the Broncos. You know, like that's, you know, you can name that one. Then the NFC, NFC West, the, that would be the Cardinals, Rams, um, 49ers, and Seahawks. Like, you know, it's just it's stuff like that. Like, I can name you those. Those are easy because there's four, and there's four within, there's four different, divisions within four teams so then each year you play you play all you know teams in your division like so if you're from the north division like afc north you'll play teams in the afc south one year the next year you play uh the teams from afc west and then you also play two additional teams from the uh, nfc see like i can explain to you that one mate, much easier much easier <laughs> Incredibly easy for me to explain football. Football is easy, which is, by the way, coming around the corner. I believe it's like four weeks. Guys, it's in, uh, four weeks. Because uh, Thursday night, uh, September 8th. Yeah. So Thursday, we one, two, then three, four. On the 18th, it will be four, four weeks. Exactly. <clears throat> I'm shooting, and I'm shooting this on the 16th of... Was it August? Woo. So, yeah, what else? Uh, what else do I have? I don't even know how much time I have left on this. What, 10 minutes? Okay. Slightly burning through all what I had to talk about, which I didn't have much to talk about this week. Oh. Hope the levels are okay, because I was fucking around with my inbox. So... Each week, I'm like shooting different ways. I'm shooting like audio different ways because I'm trying to get better at audio. Because I feel like I've, I I hit a plateau with with audio capabilities, and I'm like, huh, 
Well, the only way I'm going to get better is if I have to just I have to just fuck around with more. And I have I have so many different microphones, and I'm for someone who is more of a filmmaker. I I don't know. I just I feel like you should learn everything. You should know how to do lighting. You should know how to do sound. You should know how to do camera. And like those are the key three. And then you know you should also be able to learn to be somewhat in, comfortable in front of the camera, just because you're asking your actors to be you know comfortable in front of it granted that's their job but you i come from the the world where if you're asking someone to do something you should be able to do something too as the artist part of it so you should be able to understand where they're coming from with what where they're where they're you know where they're at and granted like i've worked a lot with like my big industry job was working in casting so Castings, like I feel like I'm pretty strong at that, and with the ability of like I've done a lot of like sit-ins with casting, so I'm like I've been reading lines with people, so like I know I'm like oh okay, like y- you learn to pick up beats and like delivery with ta- someone because it's like a dance, like you're doing a scene when you do a scene with someone, you're talking with them because like and what's so great about it is like you know you're interacting, you're talking like how you normally would talk, but every movement is staged. It can be staged if you if you want to do it like that. And that's what's so fun because you can have you can do a movement. And with that movement, it plays a it, it it's uh, a metaphor for what the underlying meaning of the story is uh, or the underlying meaning of the scene. And that's that's so cool. That's so much fun to be able to do that. And then you do it over and over again. You interact with someone like and then like sometimes you're like. Uh, how about this time, like, how about you, you'll have the actor, like, you know, like, the uh, actor A has always been gr- picking up and picking up a pencil, right? Because that's part of the script. That's what the script says. He picks up the pencil. Well, anyway, so, like, have a, you do it over and over again, like, you know, like, four or five times, right? Over and over again, over and over and over and over again. Like, okay, just getting him loose in that scene, doing that one part because, like, you know, at the angle of the camera. So, you're trying to get, you're, you're telling him, like, you know, we're just trying to get this one little thing, just trying to get this one little thing. And then you tell actor B, hey, like now this time, like when he's about to pick up the pencil or like when you will first walk in, grab the pencil, put it in your pocket or something like that. Boom. Done. It changes the whole scene because the scene was and then like now actor A, you know, either has to just play the whole scene without the pencil and then just like, you know, you know what the, the scene has to do with like he grabs the pencil because he writes something down. And he's like, well, then the actor has to be like. Do you happen to have a pen? Like, do you have that pencil? Can I see that pencil? Or like, he goes over and like does like a almost like a big dick move by like going over and picking the pencil back. Boom! It changes the whole dynamic of the scene versus if you would just grab the pencil. Whew. And that's the things you can you can plan everything. You can plan all of it. It's beautiful. That's what's so great about filmmaking. Filmmaking is so awesome in that sense. Uh, well, I guess because it, it, John, you're just left to play make believe you dickhead. Like it's. <laughs> Sit over here acting like it's like some sort of fucking ma- I think it's magic it's crazy it's the closest thing to magic because you're taking still images you're taking what 24 still images per one second and you're making that into a moving figure like this is every movement I'm doing right now is just one pixel like one still shot 24 times one second that's all this is right here. And it's picking it up. So isn't that insane? It's insane. It's insane what, what this is, what what the camera's doing right now. How it's able to pick me up. Like at full time, like where my hand's moving like this, like the camera's able to pick it up at the same damn dime. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Girl, it's insane. <laughs> Listen to the Beyonce album. Not that bad. Not that bad. Ex- was expecting it to be more yelling but you know what's the great thing you know how you know it's a Beyonce album is because like she's always yelling at you there's always a point in the song where she'll start yelling at you and you're just like Beyonce I'm on your side I'm listening to this album I'm listening to it I bought these I bought it I bought it I bought it oh I like please stop yelling at me please for the love of God stop I love I love that because it pisses so many people off because like Beyonce does not do that. It's like she kind of does. She does a lot of yelling, a lot of yelling in her songs, a lot of it. Like she's really not that good of a singer. 
And that's what's so funny. Like someone will all even admit to it. Like, yeah, she's not that good of a singer, but it's about what, like the powerfulness and like, the, I'm like, what? Like this is the whole point of what she's trying. To, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like to each calzone, to each calzone. But isn't it the whole point of being a singer to like be good at the singing part? I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she's a really. But does she write the lyrics to the songs? Who knows? Who cares? Who cares, John? Right. Who cares? So we got like four minutes left. I just, I, I, what, what else do I have? I don't have much. <gasps> um, I guess we can look at the things that I Googled this week. Uh, oh, talking about movies. Uh, I, movie recommendation for this week. So I started doing, I Googled IMDb's top 100 movies, right? And I'm just like going down the list. And, you know, sometimes I'll go to, like, of course, you know, you're not going to be in the mood of, like, the movie you're supposed to watch is, like, number eight, right? But you're like, I'm really not in the mood for that one. You watch something else, right? So you just cross it off your list. But I rewatched, and I've been years since I've watched it, but I rewatched uh, Tokyo Story. Uh, it's a movie made in 1953. It's fucking brilliant. Um, oh, I can't even pronounce the director's name. I feel so bad. Oh man, okay, let's okay. He's a Japanese director. Here, we'll, uh, we'll I'll have my phone put uh say it. Yasujirozu. Yasujirozu. Yish, yes, I don't even know. You should it's really cool. Y A S U J I R O with the line on top. Uh space, different word. O Z U. Oh man. I'm actually I'm going to start like looking into more of his movies because I absolutely love um, Tokyo Story. It's a great story. It's about a older couple who's they're empty nesters and they go to Tokyo City, like Tokyo, yeah, Tokyo City, to visit their son and their other like their other children who live there, and. Just things that unravel. It's a really film noir film, but it's black and white. May nineteen fifty three. I recommend it. It's a really good story. It's a really good film. Great. It's you know subtitles, all that shit. But you know, hey, hey, learn, learn. This might be the one thing you do that you choose. You're like, oh fuck it, I'm gonna do this. Have this be my thing that like I'm gonna try to be better on. I'm gonna try to be better at, and you. Boom. Th allow this to be something. Uh, it's on HBO Max. It's an 8.2 out of 10. 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's fucking good. It is a really good movie, guys. Uh, it grossed it in uh, yens. I guess. Is that yens for Japanese money? Uh, $132 million. <laughs> And then in Europe. Uh, and I guess that's in Europe, too. Uh, languages in Japanese. But it's it's such a great fucking movie. I reckon, uh, it, you know, it's I don't know. It's so cool to see like stories of life, and that's what it is—a story of life of like a because you're you're dealing with the relationship aspect and you're dealing with the relationship aspect of the kids and the parents and and like they're going to this other city because uh, they're going out of their comfort zone and it's just and, and especially seeing it from another culture and you're seeing how they react to these similar things that you do as an American, as a, you know, African American, as a, as a Latino, as a white person in America, in fucking Kansas, in Kansas City, in, in uh, Dallas, whatever. It, it's just cool to see that and you can see how they deliver it and you can listen to the language while reading and you can, but you see different culture and that's the thing is it, when you see let when you see more culture you be become less you, you become unable to be less inclusive is that the right way of saying it like when you see different the more you see culture it's hard for you to be exclusive with your things because you see that we're all the same and that's the biggest thing is that we're all the same oh well well, I got a, about maybe like 30 seconds before this whole thing cuts off. Well, anyway, so thank you guys.
If you got this far, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next episode. All right, bye. <laughs> sorry, sorry for the such hard cut, and cut the black.